Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Voices of Forestry podcast. I'm your host, Seth Stevenson, the communications coordinator with the Arkansas Forestry Association. And we are back this month with a brand new episode of Voices of Forestry with two new Voices of Forestry. But before I introduce those, let me give a special shout out and thank you to our sponsors this month, Big Creek Timber Co. We're going to hear a little bit more from them later on in this episode. But for now, let me come back to our guests and introduce them. Today, I'm joined by Miles Goggins and Jack Thomas, two uh, owners of the Goggins Family Tree Farm. So gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate you having us. Yeah, Glad sure. to be here. Well, you know, we, uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. We, we haven't had a tree farmer on the, epi- or on the show since like episode two or three, but we're here today to talk to uh, the, uh, the Goggins family about their tree farm, just to get a little bit of insight as to what they're doing. Uh, on their property, why their property is so important, a little bit of stuff like that. But uh, before we hop into the meat and potatoes of stuff, if you will, uh, let's hear, learn a little bit more about uh, you guys. So, Miles, if you don't mind starting us off, just tell us a little bit about who you are. Oh, sure. First of all, I should should add or, or let you know that that our other partner who is missing, and also I suppose our supervisor, <laughs> is uh, Jack's mama, uh, my sister, Jana Novak, and uh, there could not be a better business partner. Uh, and and if, if you don't tell anybody, Seth, she's a, absolutely the best sister possible. Um, but she's certainly part of this. Just couldn't be here today. But uh, Dad's side of the family moved there in the 1850s, and uh, I think it was in 1988. As you can imagine, over that amount of time, the land's gone through lots of changes. But in 1988, he converted it uh, through a USDA program from row crop agriculture into the pine plantations that are there today. Um, and it, it dawned on me sometime back thinking about Jack in that place. Uh, he's got a, a unique um, benefit that, that I don't have. That thing's been part of our, his life ever since he's been born. You know, it's, he's known it ever since he's been aware of things. And uh, we're lucky that, that he's been able to experience a whole lot of different things in his life way beyond a tree or being in the woods. And uh, a lot of it has been based there. It's uh it's a whole lot more. I've said it before. You know, it's a whole lot more than just a tree farm or a place to hunt. It's uh, it's just like another member of our family. Uh, the way all of us think of it, uh, the way we share it, the way we enjoy it. And uh, I'll tell you this: I'm a I'm a lucky man to have the family that I do. For them to want to be there as much as they are, and to do the things that they like doing down. There. And so, Jack, you are, was it sixth generation Sixth now? generation, yep. Okay, so let's just kind of start, uh, let people know kind of who you are um, and what, you know, what memories you have of, of the property. Yeah, I guess who I am. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> um, this is, as as we said, sixth generation um, part of this this property. And um, as my Uncle Miles said, I mean, that's it's all I've ever known. Uh, just from the youngest time that I can remember going out there with uh, my granddad, John Goggins, and him lead me into the woods to go deer hunt. And then uh, all the memories of, of hunting with my Uncle Miles and then accepting some responsibility as I got older for the place and, and working a little bit, not as much as I probably should or certainly as much as, as, uh, as I could down there, but um, learning things that you can never learn in, in Little Rock um, at, at the camp. And um, it's always been a place for me that, that I've been able to see as, as a refuge, just as, as things have changed throughout the course of my life, walking through different seasons of life, it's been the one thing that's been constant. And um, we've talked about this, and we'll probably talk about it more today. I mean, we, we see it as a member of the family, just in the sense that it, it has been a, a constant um, constant theme throughout generations. And hopefully, uh, and I, I feel a lot of responsibility to carry that forward with the generations that come after me. So, um, man, who, who am I? I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world to be able to have a place like this and, and a family like this to, uh, to share it with. And now I'll tell the audience this, you know, I have had the uh, fortune of visiting with you guys multiple times and visiting the property a a few here now. Uh, So I kind of know some of the stories that you guys are going to be telling today, but that's totally fine. Um, But talking kind of expanding on the fact that this property is kind of a member of your family. I mean, a lot of stuff has happened on that property. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys have had weddings, funerals, like a lot of pretty heavy uh, events, so to speak, have happened there, right? 
Yeah, yeah, significant events in our case. And, and if I may jump back real quick to one thing Jack said, when he when he said that he thinks the place is a constant in his life, I love that, and, and I, I feel the exact same way. The, a little bit of a humorous story back in 78, when my dad and grandfather were finishing the first little cabin down there for us to use to hunt out of, uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't contributed done one thing to help with all that stuff, but I didn't know better. I thought I was running the deal. And I was re really anxious for him to get finished, and it looked like we were winding down. I turned to my granddad and I said, well, finally we're finished. And he looked at me like only he could, and he smiled, and he said, son, you'll never finish. At the time, I thought, well, what a strange thing to say, but man, was he right, and I think about it almost daily when I'm down there. It is a source of, of constant you know, presence for us and, and refuge, but it changes. It's in a constant state of evolution, whether we influence that or not, and uh, I think that's one of the things that we enjoy a lot is the fact that we do try to influence things with the habitat and the management the way we can, but, but back to your question, yeah, really significant place for us um and also unknown how many birthday parties and other celebrations like that in more recent years a lot of tours um we're we're really fortunate that we've uh, been able to have a relationship with some of the classes and professors at uam and so a lot of their students have been coming through uh, we also uh, jack and i have to have a, a shooting event for friends that uh, this will be its 11th year started when Jack and some of his friends were just little fellas and uh, probably one five of them showed up one summer, you know, and we thought, well, this might be fun for some of his friends who maybe had never been outside or at least shot a gun and all, and it, that was cool, and it's just, it's changed. And I'll let Jack elaborate on that, but it certainly has changed a lot since then. But, yeah, it's, uh, for me, uh, I just am uh, thrilled beyond words that, uh, you know, that Jack wanted to propose to his now wife down there that, that his mother, my sister, wanted to be married down there, um, that it was the first place everyone said where dad's service should be after he had passed away. And, and let me tell you, too, we're talking a lot about, uh, you know, immediate family. That includes Jack's wife, Haley, and my brother-in-law, Kurt. They are, to Haley's credit, she doesn't, she's not just a good, she's a great sport, but she's not just that. She comes up with ideas about things she thinks should be done down there, and she's the first one to be there. When there's, if there's something to be fixed, if there's something that needs repaired or work to be done, that brother-in-law, Kurt, is right there every time. You don't even have to ask him, and uh, selfishly, I'm really glad for that. <laughs> well, well, Jack, that kind of, you know, brings up how has, you know, your wife, I'm not sure her background, but I'll be honest, you're dressed very differently than the folks we have in here for the show. <laughs> oh, you're in a, in a jacket, a nice button-up, like, I guess, you know, how has she kind of adapted to having this new property available to her well to, to her credit she grew up on a farm did she okay in, fantastic, in West Tennessee. fantastic so um yeah and don't let this fool you it's uh you got to fake it till you make it uh, especially here in little rock but um you know she's she's been great i mean she is she is very grounded um very just a very um I mean, there's so many words to describe her but but i think she is very grounded in um her roots and growing up like she did on, on a farm in West Tennessee. This is, it's, it's different. We don't have row crops. We've got, got pine trees, but the principles are still the same. There's always work to be done. There's, there's gotta be somebody to do it. And I think she recognizes the fact that, um, that there's, there's times that, that we need to spend down there that we could be doing something else. And, you know, you've got, you got friends going to the lake or you've got, uh, different events that, that would be fun to go to, but there are times that it, you need to take care of business, and that's something that she she understands and she appreciates and um, certainly makes my life easier when, when those times do come. But we've had, um, I mean, there are so many times, I mean, like, like we said, that's where I proposed to her because I wanted it to be a memory of, of a place that we would always have and um, not something that, you know, could change over time, and, and we will always have have that that place to to have that memory so um i mean to her credit she uh she wanted to do something to um to remember the uh, our engagement and, and our our wedding and that type of thing and she said she came up with the idea of hey let's let's plant a live oak tree so there's a, a young live oak tree that's now 
I guess, four years old that's, that's in the yard at the camp that is as a memento to our engagement down there. And it'd be cool to see that grow as our relationship grows and hopefully as our family grows. And um, so it's, it's a neat deal, and she's embraced it with, with open arms. And she's the first one. We talk about this uh, annual shooting event we have. She's, um, she's the first one to say, hey, how can we make this more fun? How can we get girls involved? How can we uh, make this you know, a bigger and better deal each, each year? And, and it certainly has been. And we're gearing up for now the 11th year, and we'll have 100-plus people again and all that good stuff. So it's a ton of fun, and she's, she's awesome. I can't say enough good things about her. All right, we're going to clip that. We'll give that to you to hand to her just to kind of yeah. show, you know. No, yeah, but I'm let me add here. this, Seth. From yeah. my observation, she's clearly patient and very forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, well, before we move away from this, uh, th- this event, uh, the shooting event here, let's kind of talk, stop and talk here since we're already kind of on the topic. Um, I guess what, what exactly, so this is just an event for anybody, I guess, or how, how does this event work for you guys out on the property? Yeah, so this will be again our this will be our eleventh year, and it started when I was in high school with a couple friends that were on the football team, and and we drove down, and like any uh, good high school boys, turned it into a competition, and then the next year we did it again, and then we all went off to college, and it was kind of our way of getting back together. And as we all went our separate ways for college, we said, hey, there are some guys that enjoy the outdoors, that enjoy recreation, enjoy being in the woods, that type of thing. Can I invite them? And the answer was, of course. And as that has grown and we've all finished college and now are in in the professional world with colleagues and associates and and other groups of friends, it's just grown and grown and grown organically to the point where we'll have 100 plus people there. And it's it's kept its, its small feel in the sense that Um, it still feels like a very tight knit group of people because everybody there enjoys the same things, enjoy being outside and, and, and that type of deal. But it's also grown so much to the point we're able to do some good with it. And that's what we've done in the last couple of years is find ways to, to impact the community. And and most recently last year had the opportunity to work with Dr. Matthew Pelkey and Doug Osborne and, and others to identify some local students at the university of Arkansas at Monticello that are interested in all the things that we're interested in as far as habitat management and forest management and property enhancement and that type of thing to um, hopefully encourage the next generation of of that workforce to go into the field and we're able to to use some of the funds from that event that we raised through raffle prizes and stuff like that to go towards scholarships uh, to support three kids at the University of Arkansas at Monticello and um, got to give a lot of credit to Dr. Pelkey and his help on on that but that was something that we hope to continue to do and um, hopefully have an impact for years to come. And they're going to be doing like and correct me if I'm wrong here but like research out on the property, right? So we, we've ex- yeah extended that opportunity to them that, hey, you know, as you have, have research projects or as you have different things that you'd like to see done, let us know. We'd love to, to open our doors to you. I mean, we'll be uh, admittedly probably a little bit more um, uh, closely guarded during turkey season, deer season, that type of thing. But we, wanna, we want this to be a, a place that they can see as, as a research opportunity to um, do the things that they need to do to, to learn the skills that they need to get to go and help places like ours and so many others across the state. So um, our goal was to, to identify students who are, had ties locally and that wanted to stay in Arkansas after graduation and have an impact in our state. Okay. Well, Miles, what's it like for you to, you know, having, having been on this property for many years and, you know, seeing your, your father and grandfather kind of build it up and cha- make changes to it. What's it like for you to see this event starting with Jack and his friends and growing into a, a you know, hundreds of people type of thing and raising money to help fund s- scholarships for students? Well, I, I'll tell you, Seth, um, and I don't know if I've ever made this confession in front of Jack, but in the very first time they got together, I was thinking, how can I maybe demonstrate the properties, uh, an expanded use of the property? and to show that some of his peers, his friends back in Little Rock could get there and think, oh, what a cool place, thinking if if that worked, you know, then it it would just go from there. I never imagined it would turn into what it is now. I didn't think it would still be around. I just didn't think like that. But it's, um, you know, I've told you before, it's uh, the the property itself is just such a special place to me because it it really and truly represents the bond between um, some of our past with our family members who are no longer here, and then 
uh, not just the present, but thinking ahead about the future is going to be, or, or hopefully will be, and knowing that that place will still be maybe the center of all that. And uh, I get too uh, sentimental talking about it now, but it, it just it means a lot because it's a it's a very real and it's very live link for me to to that to those generations. Okay. Well, gentlemen, I tell you what, we're going to take a quick pause right here and we're going to hop into uh, a quick ad break, but we'll come back here in a second. So we'll, uh, if you'll stick around with us, we're going to hear a little bit more from our sponsors this month, Big Creek Timber Co. Big Creek Timber Company proudly supports the AFA. Since 2004, doing the best job and getting the best rates for the landowners they serve have been their top priorities. They are a family-owned and operated business founded by Mr. Randy Gill, who has 40-plus years of experience in the timber industry. Quality logging jobs, fair prices, business with integrity, that's what is important to the folks at Big Creek Timber Company. For more information, give them a call at 501-337-4855 or look them up at BigCreekTimberCo.com. Once again to Big Creek Timber Company for their support of this episode. So gentlemen, uh, we've kind of talked about some of the big events and, and I realized during that discussion we haven't even mentioned where in the heck you guys are located. So if you could just kind of let people know, no specifics of course, but you know, where, where is this property located here in the state? We're a little southwest star city. Okay. So, uh, and we, we're, we straddle the county line between Lincoln and Cleveland County. And how many acres? It's just a hair over 500. 500 acres. Okay, cool. Well, you know, we, we, we've talked about some of the events um, that you guys host out there and some of the th new things that you guys are doing. But what I want to kind of talk about, too, is the management practices that you guys have. Um, I know when I first met you, Miles, you know, one of the things that you mentioned to me was um, back in the day, the, the quail population had diminished. But through some of the management stuff, you guys have brought it back, which is something you are very proud of. But if you could just kind of talk a little bit about what you guys are doing out on the property when it comes to uh, forest management. Sure. Uh, and, and the quail part is, is very recent. Um, when Dad planted this in 88, I, I want to say, Seth, we, we can check my memory on your records, but I want to say it was probably about 88, 89 that he signed up and became a member of AFA and then, you know, the tree farm system. Um, and by doing that, you had at the time one of the requirements to have a forest management plan. And we, I remember us working, or he was let, he included me, uh, to see what he was doing as we put that together. Our friend John McAlpine in Monticello at Kingwood Forestry uh, helped put together that, I think, the first management plan. We had his original aerial map for, gosh, 20 years until Jack showed up with a new one for a Christmas surprise this past year. But, uh, you know, there was, there was the, you had to, addressed the forestry you know you had it planted and you had to figure out what you wanted to become but wildlife has always been a priority for us and it, it still is you know we don't ignore the wood production and we have a responsibility to the to our boss and our other partners not here that we we see that we try to maximize that but we also it, it's truly our top goal we want to balance that with wildlife and then just the overall uh the rest of the environment there not just things we may be hunting uh because we've learned that you know, to benefit as much as possible, and it's good for everything else that's down there. Uh, that that sort of approach and management style has evolved, and as we've learned more, I think it became much more intense in terms of just that 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 scale of management. Probably around 2017, and it has it's just continued. And I I don't think this is an exaggeration. It seems to have intensified each year, and and it's I love it. Anybody that thinks you know you you have to have a huge track. Um, to, to be involved with these partners and to get in this sort of collaborative effort, that's just not so. I mean, we're, we're a living example. You don't have to be huge. Um, and two, anyone who does own property and for whatever reason doesn't engage in management, um, I'd say that's their loss because it really is, uh, you get a lot more by doing it. You know, you get a lot more out of that than, than anything you're sacrificing by, by being on the property. And uh, it's so if someone out there and has property, they're not they're not spending time on it. I encourage you to go do it. You'll be glad you did. Well, Jack, what kind of enticed you into getting more involved with the management side of things? I don't know if it was always when you were younger, kind of a oh, this is just the hunting spot. 
and it later grew into that, but kind of how did you get into the management side of the property? I would say it's just the principle of stewardship. You know, as you, as you mature and as, as you start to recognize um, to whom much is given, much is expected. And um, I, I can't say enough just about how much Miles does for us. I mean, it makes it, um, makes it so easy for, for the rest of the family to be able to enjoy and not see it all as, as work all the time. But I would say what, what got me involved was just recognizing what a blessing it is and how special and unique it is to have a place that that is yours and uh, that comes with with responsibility so um, and I'm just I'm wired to see things as as always through the lens of how can we make them better and how can we make them more impactful and how can we share this with other people so um, that's really what what has led me to get more involved and and what I think will carry me forward and hopefully the generations that come after me. Seth, I'd like to add, Jack's grandfather and great-grandfather, they're really our foundation. They they set the example, and they, I want to tell you, so many of their lessons and then, of course, the examples they set, they got us today. And, and yeah, we, we're learning, thank goodness, from professionals today and have been for a while, and so we, you know, we, we realize that there are other things to do and, and different ways to do them, but those, those two men really, um, they're still our guiding light in a lot of ways. Okay, all right. Well, you, you probably already answered this question, and it might be a very big open-ended question, but I want to ask it anyways just to hear your responses. I'd like both of you to answer if you don't mind. Why? Why, why bother with doing all of this work for this property? What, I guess, why, why, why do you choose to do this, you know? Again, I think it's because it's, it's what has connected generations in our family. And it's, it's something that is always constant and something that we get to share together. And hopefully something that we get to introduce other people to the things that we enjoy, you know, woods and, and wildlife and, and that type of thing in the sense that um, I have buddies who killed their first deer down there, killed their first gobbler down there, who've gone on their first quail hunt down there, who shot a gun for the first time down there. Um, some who that's their first experience outside of the city down there. So um, that, that's been what's been uh, impactful in my life, in addition to just seeing the legacy of, of the generations that have come before me and how they've left things dramatically better than they found them. And it's not lost on me that that'll be my responsibility to carry forward, um, both with myself and then hopefully the generations that come after me. So um, I would say my why is, is again, going back to this theme of, of it being a constant in our family and something that, that we know that we can count on. I really couldn't say it any better than Jack did, but I can add, you know, selfishly, uh, it uh, when you do make some effort, it's it's so rewarding when you look at, at something that happens as a result of some of your work, be it if you're out there hunting or even just the way the ground responds. You know, I've told you before, Seth, it wasn't until five or six years ago, I didn't know anything about wildflowers and native grasses. All I thought about was an acorn or a food plate. Now all my friends, they hear me talking about butterflies. They're like, who are you? What, what happened? It, it, but, you know, now I get excited and I'll send Jack a picture of a bunch of flowers going out there in the pine trees. But it, you, you used to didn't see that. And now we see this sort of response to, to some of the stuff that we're doing. And, and that's really rewarding. Okay. Well, uh, I, I might have buried the lead a little bit here uh, for this whole episode, but you guys were our Tree Farm of the Year last year uh, for, for 2022 is what year that was. Um, and you guys are now actually regional finalists to be kind of in the running for National Tree Farm of the Year. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about that. Where, where, where are you guys at right now? Because you've got a big uh, tour coming up here in a couple months. Um, to kind of see if you guys advance into the next stage of that. Where are you guys right now mentally with, with that? <laughs> still, still dazed, I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, I, and you know, I tell you, we can't have that kind of conversation without mentioning our, our dear late friend, Jennifer Johnson. She, she was really instrumental and in, in just helped walk us through the process. And uh, I don't know if we ever would have been nominated for district finalists last year if it weren't for Jennifer, so all credit to her. But, you know, you heard us mention the terms partners or collaboration before already. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, man, anything that's happening down there in habitat management that's good, the credit goes to our partners. And they start right there, with, right here with AFA, with the state's Division of Forestry, with USDA, with Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, and certainly with Quail Forever. Um, but that, that team, oh, and, pri and friends in the private sector, mm -hmm. that team right there, though, each of you in, in individual ways and certainly collectively, 
you know, if you start back in, say, 2015, if you will, and you come up to today again, you look out there and somebody walks and says, man, that's a good-looking stand. Oh, look at this. Well, we, we wouldn't have known to do that on our own. And so it's a tip of the hat to the team. Okay. And I guess kind of talking about the different organizations and, and Tree Farm specifically, um, what value do you guys find in being members of the tree farm system? Because because this award is with the national tree farm system, but I guess specifically with a Arkansas tree farm, what value do you guys find in that? Tremendous source of information um, on a and through AFA on a weekly basis with the tree farm system. You know, uh, throughout the year, uh, so that's extremely beneficial. And the relationships, the friendships that we've made because of our membership in these groups. Uh, I can give you a really concrete example, too. Uh, we had a terrible storm that came through on Easter night in 2020, and it, uh, it was just devastating. And we called, uh, we were nervous and worried, and probably took us a week just to get over the shock of what, you know, was there in, in front of us. Uh, and we called a friend of ours who has been friends with this family for decades, and he's in the logging business. So we felt like if anybody's going to help, this guy was. And his name is Mike Pennington. He's there in Monticello also. The first question Mike asked, he said, Miles, what's your tree farm number? Well, you know, I didn't know what. So I scrambled around and called Jennifer, and she had it. And, and within minutes, Mike called back, and he said, someone's going to call you today, and we'll go from there. Sure enough, the logger called in about 30 minutes that afternoon. He shows up, and within a week, they were over there doing a salvage operation. And so uh, if someone asked me, you know, what's the benefit of being in it, I'll say, well, if you want to know the bottom line, here's the sort of thing where it help you out. But it, 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 there's also standards that the tree farm system, you know, wants us to, to uphold uh, and, and adhere to. And certainly the four principles that are on this sign, uh, we, we feel like we do that. And, uh, and we, we enjoy doing it. But it's, it's good to have a set of goals in front of you, no matter what you're doing in life. And being a far, part of the tree farm system, it's a constant reminder. Well, guys, as we're kind of nearing the end here of the episode, uh, one one last quote unquote big question I want to ask you guys is where do you want to see this property? What do you want to see happen with this property in the future? I know, Jack, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what do you guys hope to see happen there at the Goggins Family Tree Farm? Well, selfishly, I, I would say the first thing that I want is is that the next generation can have the same experience that I did because it couldn't be a better one. Um, just to be able to have mentors, whether it's Miles or my granddad, John, um, that, that I could share the place with. And, and I hope to be able to give back to the next generation the way that they, they gave to me. So selfishly, I would say that's what I want to see is a place that I can walk into the woods dark in the morning, holding the hand of, of my hopeful son someday and, um, and be able to, to share that experience the way that I was able to share it with my uncle and, and granddad. So uh, that, that's what I would say in addition to all the things that, that we have been fortunate to already have done, which is introduce people to things that, that they would not have otherwise experienced, whether it's hunting or stewardship of the property or best practices on these types of tours and, and that type of thing. So that's, that's what I'd like to see moving forward. Two desires jumped to my mind immediately, Seth. One, uh, I really am eager for the day that Jack calls a turkey in for me. And, <laughs> and, and two, uh, I, I really and truly uh, love the thought that someday, and hope I hope I'm right there with them when it happens, but someday there's going to be somebody else who's not in this world yet, and they're going to lean up against a tree. They may be hunting, or maybe they're just taking a break, or maybe they're just going to sit down and enjoy the view. And they're going to look around, they're going to look at the tree, and they'll be like, man, this is a pretty spot. And they may not know that it perhaps there was some intent that that spot developed the way it did, but maybe they, hopefully they'll think, what a neat area, and uh, I hope it's a tree we planted when that day comes. i got a hunch it'll happen. All right. Well, gentlemen, is there anything else you all want to add or anything you want to say before we kind of wrap this up here? No, you've been great to have us. Thank you for the time. And uh, and Jack's wardrobe is not our standard attire. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let, let me thank you guys so much. You know, um, I, I was a little nervous kind of reaching out to you boys, seeing if y'all would be willing to do something like this because we've talked so much. And it's like, what more could this dude want to know? So, um, uh, but thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Well, Seth, thank you very much. I always, always appreciate your help. Always great to see you. All right. Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us this month as well. Um, as always, we want to give a special shout out and thank you to some guy named Rob slash Rob McCormick for the use of our theme song, The Same Love. That's off of his album, The Folkster. 
and as always we'll have information to his where you can find more of his music at the uh, in the description of this episode and we want to uh you know give another one last final shout out to big creek timber co for their support of this episode so make sure you join us next month when we'll have a new topic a new discussion and a new voice of forward.